Well, hello guys, this is your girl Diva Diva Fashionista. And this was a little bit of a struggle getting this video out to you. I've been through it. I am sick, <laughs> but I have a little bit of energy. So I said, let me get this out before <laughs> it's just irrelevant. But I just want to thank you guys for watching last week's video and the support and the love you showed that video. I truly appreciate it but let's just jump right in this is part two we were here last week for real love which unanimously we all seem to have loved that movie now strength of the of a woman is the second part mary j blige produced a lifetime movie and i have to say i'm not as in love with this one as i was with the first one i don't know if it's just because i love a good coming of age story or they just kind of didn't deliver i don't i don't know i'm I, I feel like i just was it just wasn't as good as the first one the strength of one based on another mary j blige song and I wrote some notes. Let's see if I get through them. <laughs> but I wasn't as familiar with that song, so I had to go and listen to it. And I do feel like the lyrics, the theme of overall theme of the song matches up to this one um, a little better. I was it's, as sick as I was now. I'm in sick since Friday. Sick as I was, I was paying attention this week, y'all. I got the names. I was paying attention. I was surprised at myself that I was able to absorb all of this now like i always say i don't intend to do a recap even though i wound up doing a recap last time i like to do a review which is just saying what i liked and what i didn't like and touching on the major points of the movie uh so hopefully we can do that <laughs> and i don't just go on and on and on so let's get into it we start this movie it is 14 years later they are grown up uh Ben and Kendra, they are in their careers and they are doing well. Uh, ben winds up marrying Connie and thankfully we don't get to see the winch in this movie. Um, <laughs> no disrespect to the actress playing Connie, I'm sure she's lovely. Okay, now Kendra is married to Kevin Kenneth, it don't even matter. I think it was Kevin. I said I got the, <laughs> the names this time, I thought that was was cute y'all can feel free to correct me i was not paying attention to that man because i didn't see it for that man from the beginning i didn't see it for him we all know it's supposed to be kendra and ben so i was not feeling dude from the beginning so um she kendra has a successful like photography studio in chicago and we see we started off there i believe that's where we started the film she's at at um her her office and she's a success and we eventually get to her house where you know she's telling him about this award she's supposed to be getting and he's like he can't make it and i'm just like hmm he can't make it to her or he has he has to work so i believe he's a surgeon he's a he's a successful doctor they're not hurting for money and basically he can't make it and then what, what was the red flag for me? Oh, she wants to have a baby. So, you know, she starts to try to, like, to, to initiate sex with him. And he, he's just way too tired. So, that was red flag number two, I would say, for me. But in, immediately, it was, it was a no for me. Because I knew he was cheating. It was, I just knew he was cheating because I'm like, okay, you're refusing sex. You're coming straight in the shower. And I don't know. Don't doctors have showers at the doc? They can't he do that then? So it was just immediately for me. I was like, mm -mm, he ain't no good. He cheating on her. So I feel like this relationship, this storyline lasted way too long. They could have wrapped that up in like 10, 20 minutes. We could have got him in and out in 10, 20 minutes. Because we was here. We weren't here for him. We were here for the relationship with Ben. But anywho, I feel like that was as long as they, they made it um, play. I was a waste of our time. But so we see that. Uh, she's still friends. Kendra's still friends with the best friend, the one that saved her life in college, Terry. Now, shout out to the person who pointed it out. Um, I, I, I was like, oh my gosh, 
I did not realize that the actress that plays Kendra and I now I know how to say her name because in between like when we go into commercial coming back from commercial and, and sometimes during a commercial they would cut to Mary J Blige and she would have some dialogue or just explanation about what made her write this or this and that and and the, the good thing about it, I, I could have took that or left it. Well, the good thing about it is that she actually said her name. So she, her name is Agiana Alexis. So Agiana, I can now pronounce her name. And shout out to the person that pointed out that Agiana was in BMF. Soon as I read that comment, I was like, oh my gosh, that's Kato. I don't know why I didn't see Kato, but then I could kind of understand because she's Kendra is more glamorous. We're playing up on her being pretty and um. Kato was just rough. She goes on the streets. She's hanging out with a bunch of dudes all day. So I didn't make that connection. But what other thing that like, went up over my head last week was uh, the best friend's name is Terry. And now both Kendra and oh, Adriana and Da Vinci are in BMF. His name is Terry. So I'm like, are they playing it off face? Like, <laughs> are they playing it off face or was this just a coincidence? I don't know. But I thought that was really cute when I realized that I'm watching. I'm like, oh my gosh, Terry. It, mm, see what y'all did there. <laughs> but it could be a total coincidence. Anyway, getting back to the, the movie. They're still friends. And uh, she convinces her to go to her um it was a fundraiser for the, the, the college Hammond um, that they went to. And there was a lot of going back and forth between North Carolina and uh, Chicago that I, that was just a little like confusing to me. And I guess I didn't pay attention, enough attention in the first one, but I'm just like, it was a lot of the back and forth. So they went to school in North Carolina, but now they're both somehow living and working in Chicago. Whatever. <laughs> so anywho, uh, so they go and of course Ben is there and he wants to talk to her and then they start to talking and they start to arguing basically she ghosted him and, he, and after she showed up in his house and I guess at that point he was decided he was just going to be with Connie and raise his child and whatever that was some like I don't know how they couldn't have made it work that's, that's the thing like I, they, they gave us an explanation about why it didn't work but I don't know how they couldn't have made it work if they really loved each other and wanted to be with each other. But that's even here. No, they're not together. Uh, I told y'all about that Ashley girl. I could tell in the first one they didn't have much for Ashley to do. So Ashley's just MIA in this movie. Um, things that happened that was of importance, of course, um, even though they're beefing at this point, uh, Kendra's dad passes away. So, of course, they have to go home to bury him. I, I caught... Sasha's name, but the, well, I don't know the now I'm thinking about I don't know the niece name. Uh, for whatever reason, because it's so hard, and then you know how it gets with teenagers. A lot of times, teenagers have to go live with a relative, usually a uh, um, a son. Now, I've seen that happen a lot. The son has to go stay with somebody else because he's just smelling himself and it's just not working out. But with between them grieving, they decide that the niece is going to go back to Chicago and stay the summer with Kendra. Um, yeah, at some point, uh, Kendra dresses up. She looks cute. She goes to see the, the husband at work and she catches him cheating. I'm like, duh, of course he's cheating. Like, he's giving you all the signs of being a cheater. And what I further didn't like with this man is that it's bad enough that you're cheating, but now you're just going to be mean <laughs> on top of that. Like, you already get guilty, but now you want to accuse her because now her friendship with Ben has been rekindled because now, um, they meet up at a, a random meetup. Random meetup. I don't know about y'all, but I've never randomly met up with any of my exes. After it was done, and I live in New York City. Let me tell you. After it was done, I ain't never seen them men <laughs> ever again. Because <laughs> we moved. It just never happened. Like, we were randomly at a place. I don't know. Maybe they saw me across the crowd, and they left. I don't know. <laughs> but I just never randomly just met up. So, that was just like, really? She so randomly meets up with them, and so now they cool. Um, there's a scene where they go to dinner. He come, they come over for dinner because now the husband's like, if that's your friend, invite him over. Why would you have your wife invite somebody over to be rude to them? I thought that he just showed his ass. I did not like that. I did not appreciate that scene. It just made me further dislike him. Of um, course, as she finds out that he is cheating, um, she takes him back. They decide to work it out. And I, I said this here on my channel. Um, 
before that, you know, I, I don't think cheating is a deal breaker. There's certain things that are deal breakers and we going to get to that, but, um, not necessarily a deal breaker. So I wasn't even mad at her that she would take him back at the indiscretion, but I didn't believe it was just the one and done. He gave me, he was cheating all the way through. That was just, just me. So, um, miraculously, you know, she does get pregnant. It, it, it's, it's saying they have some infertility issues and I'm jumping around y'all. I am. I realize that as I'm talking, I'm jumping around a lot, but I'm just trying to hit on the major points of the plot. Um, she's, Kendra is pregnant at some certain point. Um, she gets pregnant and she doesn't really tell anyone, but she's excited, which I can understand why she's not telling anyone, you know, she had struggled with infertility before. So I get it. So I, I think at some point, um, her and Ben, they talk, and it was at the funeral because somehow the husband has to leave the funeral to go back home and leave your wife while she's grieving after she lost her father. Like the most important probably person in her life, you need to leave her. That gives them time to talk. But, um, yeah. What else was important that happened? The, the major thing where, you know, um, her best friend now this is one thing i really did not like about this movie i did not like this storyline of terry having a baby with the no good husband like i said I, he gave me he was cheating on long vibes um they cheat whatever and no one tells they don't tell kendra and her godson is now the, the husband's son i did not like that storyline because terry didn't give me she would do that I don't think Terry would have went there. Like I just the type of friend that she was to, to Kendra, I didn't I didn't believe that this is something she would do. It just seemed out of character for, for her, but it's a movie, move the plot along, I guess, but it just didn't seem genuine. And uh of course she comes home, she confronts him, she's packing the bag up and impressive how the house is fabulous. They just not hurting for money. <laughs> the bag up and um he goes to grab her she falls down the steps and i already knew they kind of gassed us up because usually like you know when there's there is a miscarry especially that early on when you go to do the the sonogram a lot of times the fetus won't be there so when i saw the fetus i was like oh okay she's still gonna be pregnant but no she lost her baby and i was so sad for her even though it was a fictional baby i was still sad for her it's hard to go through a miscarriage uh, so she's something that's tied into like you know she really wanted the baby in and tied into this traumatic event so of course she's drinking and she's going crazy or everything before that she goes and she burns up his car and i'm just like whoa 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 another thing i did not like ladies do not do this fellas too do not do this do not do this we all loved a good waiting to exhale moment. That was one of our favorite scenes in the movie where Bernadine burns the car up. If I remember her name correct, <laughs> Bernie. She burns the car up. It was just oh, everything. Angela Bassett looks so sexy in the robe with the lingerie, and then she and, sn and then she split. Yeah, it was fabulous. It was a moment. Why do we have to have that again in this movie in 2023? In 2023, I will hope that you guys know better. Anything could have happened. Anything could have happened. Other cars in the lot could have got damaged. Um, the lot could have got damaged. Um, they charging you with arson. They just going to come and take a report and say, okay, just make sure you're, yeah, yeah, you're probably going to get charged with arson. Please don't do this. <laughs> please, please, please don't. You could get sued by the other car, the owners. You could get sued by the lot owners. Uh, you could, for, for the damages, because it's not just going to be a nice little pretty fire. Like, it, it could burn, really get out of control. Um, You could get evicted, because if that lot is tied to the where they live, that could be an evict. Just don't do this, okay? I'm going on a tangent, but <laughs> please don't do the burn the D, wait next hell, movie fire thing. There's better ways to handle handle it um you see what happened with left eye we don't don't burn nothing all right just 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 don't burn it just take his ass to court and get as much as you can get as much evidence of the infidelity and get as much as you can in alimony but don't do that okay <laughs> all right so uh again yeah, what else i really liked um ben's relationship with his son um it's just 
it just threw me for like a loop when he's like oh i gotta move but i'll be back and things like that i'm like oh we doing this i like that the mom was nice but sad that the mom had to have cancer to be nice um you got seen with the nice mom i loved how sasha was there for her sister once you know she just crashed she she just has this total meltdown for after you know finding out about the the son and she's just all beat up and bruised from falling down the steps and she's in the house drinking and the assistant catch uh, finds her and she's just spiraling and i thought that that was kind of out of character for kendra because kendra's been so strong and so resolute i didn't see her becoming a, a mess like that but a lot of women tie their identity to being married and no one wants to be seen as a failure so i i i get it but none of that was like her fault it was none of her fault so you know she beat up on herself and uh i was sad for her uh yeah the movie ends rather abruptly we don't really get to see them be in their relationship um and how it plays out for them we it's like the beginning of them you know starting off their relationship and really just being committed just just saying that we're going to do this so that for me was kind of like hmm, we're sad they're they're both getting divorced in the midst of divorce i was, like it was just it just wasn't the story i was expecting did i enjoy it? i still enjoyed it i still probably like if it if i was home and i was flipping through the guide and it came on i'd probably watch it again i'm just not as in love with it as i was with the first one but overall it was pretty good it was it was pretty good let me know what you guys thought about this movie what were your highlights what did you like or dislike let me know down below thumbs up if you like subscribe if you like and i will see you next week hopefully on time on sunday on sunday for keisha Cole. hopefully let's just hope nothing else crazy happens all right thanks for watching